Chapter One of Jane Eyre. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Chapter Two of Jane Eyre, Lady's Maid. What shocking conduct, Miss Eyre, to strike a young gentleman, your benefactress's son, your young master. Master, how is he, my master? Am I a servant? No, you are less than a servant, for you do nothing for your keep. There, sit down. Section zero of A Visit to the Holy Land. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Preface of A Visit to the Holy Land, Egypt and Italy by Ida L. Pfeiffer. Preface by the Vienna Publisher. For two centuries the princes and nations of the West were accustomed to wander towards the land of the morning. In vain was the noblest blood poured forth in streams in the effort to wrest the country down and think over your wickedness. Chapter three of Jane Eyre. Chapter two of Jane Eyre. This Chapter four of Jane Eyre. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Elizabeth Clett. Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Chapter 4 From my discourse with Mr. Lloyd, and from the above reported conference between Bessie and Abbott, I gathered enough of hope to suffice as a motive for wishing to get well. A change seemed near. I desired and waited it in silence. It tarried, however, entry of our heavenly teacher from the grasp of the infidel. And though the Christian Europe of the present day forbears to renew a struggle which, considering the strength that has been gradually days and weeks passed, I had regained my normal state of health, but no new allusion was made to the subject over which I brooded. Mrs. Reed surveyed me at times with a severe eye, but seldom addressed me. Since my illness she had drawn a more marked line of separation than ever between me and her own children, appointing me a small closet to sleep in by myself, condemning me to take my meals alone, and pass all my time in the nursery, while my cousins were constantly in the drawing-room. Not a hint, however, did she drop about sending me to school. Still I felt an instinctive certainty that she would not long endure me under the same roof with her. For her glance now more than ever, when turned on me, expressed an insuperable and rooted aversion. Eliza and Georgiana, evidently acting according to orders, spoke to me as little as possible. John, gradually increasing for the last six hundred years, might prove an easy one. We cannot Section 21 of thrust his tongue in his cheek whenever he saw me, and once attempted chastisement. But as I instantly turned against him, roused by the same sentiment of deep ire and desperate revolt which had stirred my corruption before, he thought it better to desist, and ran from me tittering execrations and vowing I had burst his nose. I had, indeed, levelled at that prominent feature as hard a blow as my knuckles could inflict, and when I saw that either that or my look daunted him, I had the greatest inclination to follow up my advantage to purpose. But he was already with his mamma. I heard him in a blubbering tone commence the tale of how that nasty Jane Eyre had flown at him like a mad cat. He was stopped rather harshly. "'Don't talk to me about her, John. I told you not to go near her. She is not worthy of notice. I do not choose that either you or your sister should associate with her.' Here, leaning over the banister, I cried out suddenly, and without at all deliberating on my words, "'They are not fit to associate with me.' Mrs. Reed was rather a stout woman, but on hearing this strange and audacious declaration, she ran nimbly up the stair, swept me like a whirlwind into the nursery, and crushing me down on the edge of my crib, dared me in an emphatic voice to rise from that place, or utter one syllable during the remainder of the day. "'What would Uncle Reed say to you if he were alive?' was my scarcely voluntary demand. I say scarcely. 